All right, Mr. or Mrs. Bob Bueller, you are here because you want to learn how to play Gloomhaven with five players. Um, it's actually relatively straightforward. Um, there's just a few points I'll go over and, you know, we'll start with kind of the nuts and bolts stuff because there's a few things that you need to do uh, just based upon the creator of Gloomhaven, Mr. Superstar Isaac Childress. Uh, he has some official recommendations, uh, but there's a lot more than that to playing it with five players. There's a lot of intangibles and it kind of alters, you know, the way you play the game and, and uh, spacing and all kinds of interesting stuff. So first off, um, nuts and bolts stuff, you're going to need a modifier deck, another modifier deck for the fifth player. Um, there's a couple ways you can go about doing this. Um, if you're a tactile person like me, like I like to have the stuff in my hands, I do sometimes use apps, but mostly I prefer to stay with the uh, tactile, you know, the deck and, and that sort of stuff. I mean, that's one of the reasons why I love board gaming, amongst many others, is that it's, you know, it's more tactile, it's more in the, the physical moment. So option A is to get a print and play from BoardGameGeek.com. It's one of the largest board game sites in the world. Um, not sure if it's the largest, but it's big. So you'll have to get a regular login. You've got to give them your email. They won't spam you or anything like that. So don't worry about that. And then you can go and download the print and play from them. Second is that you can actually buy one. Um, I believe they're on Etsy and there's a few different places you can buy them. Um, I think the one on Etsy is pretty good from reviews I've read. Um, I'm going to put a link to it in the description along with a link to some other things. So um, if you do get that professional one, it's, it's going to probably look a little better unless you're some sort of professional printer. I am definitely not. The third option is that you can use the Gloomhaven helper app. The Gloomhaven Helper app is going to do a lot of things. It's going to allow you to manage monsters and hit points and all kinds of cool stuff. Um, and you can also use it as the modifier deck for the fifth person. So for all, all of you who you know, don't mind using the actual, you know, the app, uh, I think it's like 10 or 11 bucks or something, um, then you know, go ahead, use that third modifier deck. So next is, if you do use a print and play, um, or even if you buy the one from Etsy, you're going to want to sleeve it. Um, modifier decks is something that's going to be used an absolute ton throughout Gloomhaven, so you should be sleeving that anyways. But for this, yeah, you want to sleeve it so that, you know, one, you can't see any subtle differences because you don't want to be able to see, um, you know, what card is coming up next that gives you an unfair advantage. And just don't do that, you cheater. <laughs> um, okay, so... The official recommendation, as per Isaac Childress, is that you increase the difficulty two levels. So you go into, you know, your player's guide or whatever, you go to that chart and, you know, you do all your, your normal level stuff where, you, you know, you take the average level and divide by two and then you add two to that number. So if you have, you know, level three characters, it's going to be, you know, level 1.5 rounded up to two plus two for that. So you'd be playing at, at uh, four difficulty if you had all level three players. Um, and so that will make it so that there's more elites. They have more hit points, more shields, more effects, more stuff like that. It won't actually increase the amount. Um, you're still going to use four because there's no way of actually increasing the amount unless you make up some sort of house rule. And I mean, board gaming house rules are, are great. So if you want to do something like that, you know, go ahead. But the, you know, the general consensus out there is that you want to run it at two difficulty levels higher and leave it the same. Um, so yeah, and then also you leave the gold in the experience uh, at the previous level so that it doesn't unbalance it. Because essentially you're increasing that difficulty, but you don't want to increase all the rewards and everything because what you're going to do is you're going to accelerate your progress. You're going to be able to buy more items, your prosperity will go up faster, that sort of stuff. And so by playing with five players, especially if it's consistent, again, you must be really popular if you have five players consistently and, and, and good for you, that's really cool. Um, but if you do play it consistently, you're going to accelerate all of those things. Okay, next is going to be um, time. 
Um, and I wrote a really cool article on my website, so check out my link below, how long it actually takes to play Gloomhaven. And I mean, some people's mileage is gonna vary on this, but my group is, let's call it, you know, medium casual, and it takes us a good three hours sometimes on a scenario. When you have five players, it's gonna take you quite a bit longer. Um, and it's not just linear, like, it, you know, from four to five, it's gonna be more than from three to four. Um, because, you know, it's just all these extra things that compound on each other. Um, you know, all the extra decisions. And when you have five players on some of these maps, it makes it a lot more difficult to just move around and, and do a bunch of things. So plan on some extra time. And, you know, if you do, you'll you'll be okay. You, you know, it's not something that's the end of the world, but just, you know, it, it's definitely going to be longer than a normal game. The next is spacing. So, you know, Gloomhaven is a really finely tuned game. Isaac Childress, I mean, he built this game by himself, but he did an amazing, I mean, not all by himself, of course, but he generally designed it and did all this kind of stuff. It's very well balanced. Um, so five players does throw some of the map balance out a little bit around, especially around spacing. Um, the maps are gonna be a lot tighter. So you wanna make sure that you put a little bit more emphasis on abilities like jump and flying and even just extra move and stuff so that you can move around and actually like get something done without being stymied all the time or having to take extra time. And that's why I say it takes even, it's not a linear scale on how long it takes because as you add more people and more complexity, it's harder to figure out what move you're gonna make that's actually gonna be effective. So trend a little bit more towards the side of you know prioritizing move move is going to be big for everybody when you have five players um the next is going to be the actual spacing so you know you're gonna have to make sure you don't have a party full of melee characters and everyone's you know pushing up on each other you know sh hitting each other with elbows trying to get to the front and there's not enough real estate to go around um uh, okay so all that being said, yeah, you want to move around, you don't want melee, get some range damage dealers in there, and then make sure you do not have a ton of summons. If, if, if you have five players and a bunch of summons, it's going to be like you're at a rock concert or something. You're not going to be able to get anything done. Um, there is, minor spoiler alert here, there is a class that has a, quite a few summons. Um, that class, I would not recommend playing when you have five players, uh, just don't do it. Just, yeah, pick something else or you probably won't be that happy. Um, another thing that happens is when you pump up the difficulty two levels, uh, monsters are going to do quite a bit more damage. And then uh, because you're all jammed together, uh, AOE attacks from bosses or elites or, you know, even regs sometimes, they're gonna be really deadly when you're all jammed together in a close area. And so just be aware of that point. Make sure that you've got you know a reasonable amount of spacing. That's why I say you don't want a ton of melee characters. Um, and then another point would be uh, shields. As you go up, there's certain enemy types that get a lot of shields. And so make sure you're prepared for that because shield can really be tough to deal with and when you're pushing it up to difficulty levels you're still going to be weaker even though there's five players and so if somebody's got shield two or three it's really tough it's going to be really tough to punch through that shield so make sure you've got some pierce or you know some big higher damage cards not something that's you know hit eight guys at two damage or three damage because it's going to be completely ineffective um so when you're playing with five players like i said before you're going to accelerate um, how the game proceeds, right? So yeah, prosperity level is gonna go up faster. You have more gold, and I won't spoil exactly how that works in case you're a new player, but if you're not, you'll know exactly what I'm talking about. So yeah, prosperity is gonna go up. So just make sure and keep that prosperity at the original, or keep the difficulty, the gold, the XP, or not the difficulty, the gold and the XP at the regular level, difficulty goes up two levels. Um, and then another point would be road events. So road events very often correspond to a character. Um, you know, there's a little symbol on them and, and if you have that character in your party, you know, something different happens. With five players, you've got more classes, 
greater chance you're gonna be able to unlock those. So my suggestion is that you rotate a person and say this person is the inactive person for the event. And just rotate that through, keep track of that, and then you won't be unbalancing the road events. Um, so if you have five players and you don't really wanna play five players because you don't want it to be all jammed up and you'd prefer to play kind of, you know, how Isaac designed the game, which is four players max, and you don't wanna do all these things, you can have one person be the DM. And what this does is, it makes it really simple for the other players. Um, so it's almost like more like playing a video game where you're just sitting there with your character and one person is handling all of the nuts and bolts. So they're, you know, doing all the enemy movements and the targeting and the damage and the status effects and putting the gold out and moving the monsters around, loading up the room, stuff like that. Um, very often there'll be a person who enjoys doing those things. So that is one other option as well, um, instead of them actually being a fifth player character. Um, the other option uh, is you can run two maps simultaneously. So get ready, you better have a big table to do this because it's gonna be tough. But if you do, you d essentially just split them and you play two separate scenarios. Um, not my favorite way of doing things you know for to me board gaming is about bringing people together and it's, it's a bit tougher to interact when you're actually doing separate things but if you don't want it to be super crowded um, you can go three and two um, although it's not ideal um, now I also see out there a lot of people going okay can we play Gloomhaven with six players no you can't don't do it I mean, you can, but again, you're gonna you're gonna have to run two simultaneous. I would not recommend having six players on one map. Um, it just doesn't really work. It's gonna be a gong show. Um, so there you have it. There's how you play Gloomhaven with five players. Um, please like and subscribe. Um, it really helps my channel grow. I really appreciate it, and thanks very much.